Let's take a closer look at the open and shut case of zebra mussels. Not zebra mussels, zebra mussels. Not zebra mussels, zebra mussels. That's right, these menacing mollusks are only the size of a fingernail, but these little clam-like creatures are a big problem, not only in the Great Lakes, but many large lakes and rivers throughout North America. They're recognizable by their dark zigzag stripes and sharp-edged two-part shells. Originally from the Black and Caspian Seas, zebra mussels probably arrived in North America during the 1980s via ballast water discharged by freighter ships from Europe. Some pinpoint the exact year to 1986 when they first appeared in Lake St. Clair between Lake Huron and Lake Erie. If you've ever stepped on zebra mussels, you know their edges can be razor sharp. Walking on a bed of zebra mussels is like walking on broken glass. I've met many people who had to have stitches after having their toes cut wide open. In fact, I once met a boy who was running on a beach, covered in zebra mussels, sliced his arm open when he fell, 15 stitches. Zebra mussels don't attach themselves to people, but they will stick to almost anything that doesn't move. Whether it's beaches, there's a photo with thousands of them on the shore of Lake Erie after a winter, to shopping carts, to tires, to boat propellers, even cars. I think that's called a muscle car. They will stick to plants, clams, crayfish, even themselves. They use what are called bisel threads, thin hair-like strands to stick to almost everything. A school principal once told me that his daughter did her thesis investigating whether there was anything zebra mussels wouldn't attach themselves to. There wasn't. She found they even stuck to non-stick Teflon. They stick to everything like aquatic superglue. Zebra mussels have a three to five year lifespan and reproduce in quantities and at a speed out of science fiction. A female zebra mussel can lay up to a million eggs in a spawning season. With few natural predators to keep them under control, their numbers explode in ways beyond imagination. Their total weight can sometimes pull heavy buoys completely underwater. I had a student that once asked, what's so bad about zebra mussels? My grandmother lives on a lake filled with zebra mussels and the water is now perfectly clear. Zebra mussels are filter feeders and feed primarily on algae. They can process up to one liter of water per day per mussel. So they filter out all the algae. Since zebra mussels were first established in Lake Erie, Water clarity in the lake has increased from 6 inches to 30 feet in some areas. Now, a clear lake with no algae sounds like a good thing, but algae is part of the food chain. Produces oxygen in the water for fish. A clear lake might mean brighter light levels, causing aquatic plants to increase in number and size. That can be a problem for recreational boaters and swimmers, as well as some native fish and plants. Zebra mussels also have the potential to harm native mussels by interfering with their feeding, their growth, movement, and reproduction. Some native mussels have been found with more than 10,000 zebra mussels attached to them. They also have a negative impact on zooplankton, which can greatly affect the populations of native fish. So zebra mussels may be small, but they can cause big trouble because they can change the biodiversity of the water. They're a big headache in a little shell. In 1989, the city of Monroe, Michigan lost its water supply for three days due to massive numbers of zebra mussels clogging the town's water pipeline. No turning on your faucet, no flushing your toilet. Hospitals were even forced to use bottled water. Zebra mussels can be an expensive drain on the wallets of North American taxpayers. Removing huge colonies of zebra mussels from the water cooling pipes of hydroelectric plants costs more than $50 million every year. I'm a good friend who works at the Detroit Edison plant in Monroe, and he took these photos late one night to show how zebra mussels continue to be a real problem. In the beginning, many years ago, scientists tried sound transmitters. They tried a Teflon-based paint. They even tried a paint mixed with jalapeno peppers. In the end, they found the ideal solution was just good old-fashioned elbow grease. Regular preventive maintenance yields the equivalent of dumpster upon dumpster of zebra mussels, as my friend can attest. Remember, zebra mussels are like aquatic hitchhikers. They can spread via boating, fishing, and diving gear. 
They have the ability to stay alive out of water for several days under moist and reasonably cool conditions. So it's important to clean, drain, and dry everything when you move things from one body of water to another so you don't bring them to new locations. California and other western states are a long ways from the Great Lakes, but many locations have seen the arrival of zebra mussels over the years. So here's some advice. Don't move a mussel. I hope you liked what I've shared. Please subscribe to my channel to follow other cases of invasive species. And as always, thanks for watching.